He and Biffle have been racing nose to tail. Somebody, somebody gets into the back of him here. Boots him. Biffle. Biffle in the Yikes. safety car. Yikes. Whoops. Just got back in the throttle a little harder than and Harvick did and got into the back of him. So Harvick, okay, having to walk over the pit wall and walking into Greg Biffle's pit. Talking to Randy Goss. That's uh, Biffle's crew chief. He's about the most impatient thing. I'll be waiting when he comes in here. As Biffle got into the gas before Harvick, just too much contact for Harvick to be able to straighten out. Yeah, I know he's got ET on his uniform, but I think he's gonna put a bat leap on him when he comes in. Kevin Harvick standing atop the uh, 2019 war wagon, glaring at Greg Biffle as Biffle goes by. Here he comes. He leaped over the uh, barriers there, and here we go. Made his presence felt as uh, he was waiting for Greg Biffle when Biffle climbed out of his car. You have seen how fenders and tempers can fly here at Bristol. Biffle's an idiot, that's pretty much enough. That's all you gotta say. Matt Crampton has to race Wilton to get by. Oh, Ford, Ford gives a round he goes. Round he goes. Watch the six, the 20. Look. A little bit of contact there, a little bit of, little bit of contact, and around boy goes. Yep, might have had some contact there. Kevin Harvick's on his way to the garage. He's done for the day, not because he's tired of racing, but because NASCAR said you're not going to race anymore. And here's the reason, not because he spun Coy Gibbs, but because he said on the radio before it happened, I'm going to go get him. So it was definitely intentional. NASCAR heard it on the radio, and they've said, Kevin, you're done for the day. August funded by Ricky Rudd, Harvick into the outside wall. Kevin Harvick crashes hard now. The GM Goodrich Chevrolet into the wall in turn two as Ricky Rudd and he make contact. Coming into turn number one. Inside, inside. It's fun of. Golf is out. It's fun of. Right there, the contact. When you get hit going into a corner, you don't save that race car. Nothing you can do. And so what happens in these situations oh. is we get pit crews involved. Harvick's pit crew coming in to intervene. And an army of Winston Cup officials. And Ricky Rudd took a <laughs> cheap shot at us. If he's going to, you know, take a cheap shot, he's going to get one back. I promise you that. <laughs> NASCAR officials telling Kevin to get off the car, get the crewman off the car. Kevin going to have his say. He got in behind the... Uh, Go right there. No, uh, 29 came across the nose of the 17. Kenseth jacked him up going across the short shoot. All the way down the short shoot. Drives in there in front of him, but. That transpired between the two of them under yeah. green. And then uh, Harvick was not happy with Kenseth because he turns him pushed him across the short shoot, so he turns him around. Well, I believe Kenseth should be able to go back in his position. Oh, he's. Dang, he's. Is this, is this real? Is this happening? <laughs> it is. This is not a highlight field. <laughs> we'll see how NASCAR rules on this. Oh, yeah. Whoa. He definitely got help. What's the score, Larry? Oh, I'm not sure on that one. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's at least one to one. It's going to be Oval Office to Oval Office. <laughs> That's it. The line game. keeps getting longer there. Yeah. Oh, got a car around, several of them. Kevin Harvick, this is the big one, boys. We have it here every year. Got a whole Let's talk about it. ten cars involved. Casey Kane, Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards, Michael, Dale Earnhardt Jr. went through the grass. Yeah, something happened up here off the of turn four. Uh, somebody got sideways or got into somebody. I couldn't tell exactly what happened. And Harvick climbs out. This is always a race of great excitement, fever pitch. And that includes the temper and frustration level as well. And that's a couple of mad drivers right there as well. Just remember, these two drivers had an altercation in the Gatorade 150 back in Daytona as well with each other. Tony Macek and Kevin Harvick, not pleased. High expectations. You come in here with high expectations, that creates big disappointments. After Daytona and I should be fired and all that, he can take that and show it where the sun don't shine, baby. Oh, and he tangles with Harvick, and they both spin. Harvick right in the middle of traffic. Everybody scattering, trying to get around. Jamie McMurray now spins as they take evasive action. Montoya, Harvick, and McMurray all around in turn one. Now Harvick's really mad at Montoya right now. He's parked in front of him. He's not going to let him move. They both got an issue. 
Well, Kevin Harvey doesn't know exactly what happened here. He knows he got contact. Well, he knows Pablo exactly Montoya. what happened. He, he didn't pull in front of him just to stop there. That's what happened. He's well, mad. there's some other things that happened here. Because... Let's see if they're going to fight. I'm going to see this. <laughs> All right. Montoya is upset. Harvey is not a guy you want to mess with. What are you doing? Watch this. Oh, here we go. He's over there and gone to space. He's out of the car. Neither one of these guys are happy here. Harvick said, no, stop it. Stop it. Montoya is the Montoya's, instigating this thing Montoya now. Montoya keeps pushing him, and Harvick's not a guy you want to push too many times. I was talking about kicking his ass, because that's how I felt about it. And it all just goes up in smoke because, uh, you know, some people get impatient. But uh, just hate it. Uh, frustrated with 42. Just seems like he runs over somebody every week. In the garage, everyone's known it for months. It's not two weeks old. This is something that's been going on for months. Denny Hamlin had some, some interesting comments to say about RCR in the media center yesterday, so I don't know if it has anything to do with that, but you can see a little bit of damage here in Kevin Harvick's car, not even up to full speed. All I know is if I was Gil Martin or Mike Ford, I'd be pretty upset right now. We need to be out on that racetrack making laps, and now our cars are headed to the garage area, both with damage because of a couple of hard heads. Now the two yeah. drivers are going at it, Kyle. Yeah, and, and, and you see Kevin, Kevin, Kevin gets out of the car. Kevin was in the car. Kevin got out of the car to come say something to Denny because Denny was really talking to Gil. Gil did a great job. He listened to what Denny had to say. He didn't get confrontational. He walked off. And I took a look at the 29 and the 11, and they were back to back. And I said, man, they're pretty darn close. Kevin Harvick's back bump, actually front bumper, was on the 11's back bumper. So who knows if this even began before they hit the racetrack. And Harvick and Bush. <laughs> He's after him. Yeah, this 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 has just started now. Kyle says, I don't know how you gotta have to. This ain't gonna happen too good. There was a pass, there was contact, and then as Boyer went into the fence, Kyle Bush came and turned Kevin Harvick around. Harvick's up on the top a little bit loose, and I had a run, and I gave him room, and he kind of came off the wall. That's a bad angle, obviously, but. Um, you know, and then he lifted early to let me go into turn three. I thought it was all good, and then he drives in the back of me there. So, Harvick looking in his mirror. Shuts the switches off. Something's going to have to give here, boys. This... No, nope. wheels no. off again. Yeah, here here he comes. comes. He says, okay, this is enough. I'm going back here, and we're going to have a little talk. And there goes his car. Things happen. Things happen. That's it. That's it. Harvick still stays in front. Harvick up about a half a line. Around goes Harvick. Around goes Ty Dillon. And Matt Crafton's able to get through. Gets a hold of Harvick. Turns him around. Got him off the bottom of the racetrack, then tried to go by on the inside, but Kevin couldn't maintain control of it. See Kevin Harvick and Ty Dillon going at it on the back stretch. Not happy about this restart. And the way they were racing, and around the three is trying to get that get 14 turned around. Don't get the bad end of it here. I think he's trying to spin him out. He hadn't any luck yet, but it looks like he's not giving up. Uh, three just dumped me. Uh, exactly the reason why I'm leaving RCR because you got those kids coming up and they got no respect for uh, what they do in this sport, and they've had everything fed to them with a spoon. So he's parked right in front of the three, so the three can't get in its stall. He took it. He took uh, it. Down. it was down. And here is the cause of the upset between Joey Logano and Kevin Harvick. Yeah, when I said that, I thought Harvick's car might be aerodynamically challenged getting into turn three. I thought that's what put it up the racetrack. But I think you can see <laughs> a lot like what Jamie McMurray was talking about. My car don't turn so good. My rear wheels are off the ground. And now there will be a discussion. You notice that Harvey hadn't taken his helmet off. No, but I like that the crew members, while standing guard, they're content to let the two drivers talk it out. Really dumb driving there at the end. So you, you got to be aggressive, but you still got to use your head. You can't just detach it and lay it on the floorboard. Way out of shape was the 48. Little bumping and banging as they go into turn one.
Jimmy Johnson got into the side of the four of Harvick. Smoke now out of the left rear of Harvick. Around goes the four. A lot of damage to the back of that car. And Jimmy forces his way back on the racetrack. And, and the four, you see, he doesn't want to give him the lane. He can move up to the middle. I just held my ground, and he just slammed into the side of the door like I wasn't even there. So the spotter was telling me four wide, and, and um, I guess he just figured that he'd come up the racetrack. But uh, Unfortunately, now this is a major, major hurdle for this four car in race one of the playoffs. Kevin not happy at all with the way it went down, and so they're going to discuss it, and maybe a little more than discussion. You see the sport's full of emotions. You know, Kevin Harvick feels like he was done wrong, and he wants to express his displeasure with Jimmy. These two worked really closely together, you know, making their cars faster, but you can see Kevin's not happy with Jimmy.